So, here I use uh, the postal network and in the postal network I have no problem. Because in the postal network I send a letter and we can lose it. But when we receive information it's correct. Because nobody draw on the postcard, add letters or things, so the information is not modified by the postman. But when you send binary information on the link, here you have a problem. Because this uh, binary information can be changed by some, uh, for example, uh, some transmission errors you may have on the link. So here, for example, I'm sending this with a sequence of uh, bits. And I want to be sure that it is sent correct. So one solution, a very <laughs> simple solution that have been defined in the early day of telecommunication is to use a parity bit. What does it mean? It means that in a sequence, I will always send an odd or an even number of bits equal to one. So here I give you for example, here, in the first row, I have sent six bits equal to one. Okay? So what does it mean? It means that here, I have an even number, so I will put zero. On the second row, I have sent three bits equal to one. So I will add an extra bit equal to one to have four, an even number of bits equal to one. Etc. Etc. So I do it with the row. I can do it also with the column. So here on that column, I have nine bits equal to one. So I send an extra bit equal to one to have ten bits equal to one. So an even number of bits equal to one. So what we call parity bits. So parity bits are okay. If I have an error, for example, here, this information goes wrong. So in fact, I don't, my signal has been modified and the receiver understood a zero instead of a one. So here, of course, you have two places, so a row and a column, where it's wrong. So what you can do is to correct and change the value. It was a, a 1, I know it's wrong, so I put a 0. But here you see, it works only with one error. If I have two errors, I will know that these two rows are wrong, these two columns are wrong, but I don't know if I have to change this one and this one, or this one and this one. So I know that it's wrong, but I don't know how to correct it. So, correct detection is quite easy and doesn't carry a lot of information. If I want to correct it, I have to add, add more extra, more information to correct it. And some error, so in a, at this level, we suppose that the error rate is very low. So to carry much more information can be a wrong thing. As I say, it's not always the case. For example, in ADSL, you can add still a lot of errors. So what you will do is to add this forward error correction code that will allow you to correct errors in the signal you send, on message you send. And so that way, the receiver will receive something much more correct than uh, without for our error code, and so our computer networks can work better. But we will not, I will not go into details for forwarding error correction. We are going to see how it works. So CRC or cyclic redundancy code. So we are going to do some math. 
a very, very difficult map because we are <coughs> going to define plus and minus in a binary way. But in fact, I'm not using uh, plus and minus in the usual way, but I'm using modulo 2 arithmetic. Modulo 2, it means that it's the rest of the division by 2. Okay? So, 0 plus 0. How much? Zero. 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 Even after a long period of vacation, you can do that. Okay? <laughs> 0 plus 1. One. Oh. 1 plus 0. It's written, I think. It's one. One. And 1 plus 1? Zero. Zero. Right? It's 1 plus 1, normally it's 2, but it's modulo 2, so it's the rest of the division by 2, so I divide 2 by 2, I have 0 as the rest. So here I have 0. So I can do also the same thing for minus, so something very difficult too, 0 minus 0, good. 0 minus 1, 1. It's normally it's minus 1, but when I just do the division, I have 1 as a rest, so it's okay. 1 minus 0, 1. On 1 minus 1, 0. Okay, so, and what we can see is that plus and minus give the same result. So if I add twice the same information, the same uh, value, in fact, is to suppress it. But logical, because we are in modulo 2 arithmetic, so if I have x, I do x plus x, it's 2x, and it's a multiple of 2. So the result will be 0. Okay? So it's like doing x minus x. Okay, so that's a good property we are going to to use, so plus and minus others. So now, what we are going to do is to uh, make things complex. I li we like complexity because people have more difficulty to, to understand things. And for example, here I'm going to do this polynomial representation of this binary value. So what is this binary value? So if I write it on the whiteboard, it's 0, 1, 1, 1, uh, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. So in fact, it, it's not a binary value. It's some ink on the whiteboard. And this ink represents a binary value. But here I don't put a binary value, I just put ink on the whiteboard. So here it's a way to write easily something binary because I can put a circle for zero or a, uh, a bar for one and I, I symbolize this binary value. But I can, if I want, to use more ink. And I can write it as a polynomial thing. So I will say, for example, here it's 1 times x power 0, plus 0 times x power 1, plus 0 times x power 2. So here I'm using much more ink, but I still represent the same binary value. Okay. So it's what I have done here. I do not need completely on the whiteboard. And of course, then I can simplify things. 0 times x2, I can suppress it. 0 times x1, I can suppress it. 1 times x0, it's 1. So this way, I can represent my binary value by a, poly by a polynomial value. And here is. In fact, you see, each time I have a bit equal to 1, it will be a power in my polynomial. So here, I have bit 1, uh, 0, 0, 
3, 4, 5, 8, 11, 13, 14, and 15 equal to 1. So I have put it here that way. What a just another way to represent a binary value in a polynomial way, but it's still a binary value. So why I'm doing that is because if you go to a, every standard, for example, you go to Ethernet standard, in some place of the standard, you will find a polynomial value on the standard. So it's strange to we are doing computer things and uh, computer network, we are doing protocols, and some, in some places we have something x power 15 plus x power. So why do we have this? It's because we have a value called a poly, uh, generating polynomial that is used to make a division on a sequence number. And so we are going to see the theory of polynomial, how we can do this division. And then we are going how we can implement it. So what do we do? First step, I have to send a binary sequence. I will call this binary sequence I want to send x i i x. What do I do? I know both ends, both systems know the same generating polynomial value that I will call g of x. Okay? So this is written in standard, and every standard will say that this is a value chosen for g. And so it's something like x15 plus, let's say something, plus 1. So here, the highest rank of my polynomial will be viewed as r, or as the rank of my polynomial. So here it's 16. So what do I do? I multiply ix by x power r. So what does it mean? For example, I have a value, let's say, x2 plus x plus 1, and I multiply it by x2. What will I have? x4 plus x3 plus x2. If I represent, so if I represent this, it was 1, 1, 1. If I represent this, it's 1, 1, 1, 0, 0. So in uh, practice, it means that I am doing a shift of two bits to the right. Uh, to the left. So here is just a way to do a shift. But instead of taking of, uh, talking about electronics, here I am speaking of mathematics, but it's the same thing. So here I will shift my message, so I will, add, I will add some bits, and the number of bits I will add to my, to my message is the rank of my polynomial value. Uh, <laughs> polynomial, uh, uh, generating polynomial uh, So I do that, and after I divide, so if there is a mistake here, I divide i x times x power r by my generating polynomial. So don't be afraid of that. It's like, for example, I have uh, 35 divided by 2. How would you make this division? Difficult. So you say, in three, how many times? So I look at the first number, and I say in three, how many times I have two? And we say one. So one times two equals two. So I divide and I have 15. <coughs> then I do my division. In 15, how many times I have two? And here I will have seven, <laughs> and we have, I will have a rest of one. 
Okay? So that's the division. Now we are doing the same with polynomials. So what does it mean? It means that here I will have a rest of which will be a polynomial value. And I will have a, a value here that is the result of my division. So what I can do, I can say that i of x, xr times g of x is equal, uh, time, uh, I will write this, this is equal to n of x times g of x plus r of x. As I say that, 35 is equal to 14.2 plus 1. 15, 12, that's 2, plus 1. 17. 17. 17, that's 2, times 2, that's 1. In fact, I don't need this result. Because what I'm going to do now is to add r of x on both parts. So I add the rest of my division. So what does it mean? It means that this will disappear because we are we are in uh, layer two uh, modulo two algebra. <coughs> so we saw that plus and minus are equivalent. So it means that this disappears. And what is very interesting to see is that what I am sending here is a multiple of my generating polynomial. So I don't care of that. The interesting property is that I'm always <coughs> sending multiple of this polynomial. And the good property is that when I receive something that is not a multiple of my polynomial, then I know it's wrong. So I receive g of x, which is a sequence receiving by the network. I do the same <laughs> division because everybody agree on g of x. And if the rest here is different of 0, I have a transmission error. OK? So that's the theory. Do you repeat the last part? Okay. So the last part is that we are going to see it in an example. So I have, if we look at the whole picture, here we have the sender, we have the receiver. So the sender has an initial second to send to the net. So what you do is to multiply this sequence by uh, I, x power r, and then you add the rest of the division by g of x. So you know that this is equivalent to nx g of x. And so the, the, the important property is that what I am sending is a multiple of Okay, like when I did, for example, I have 35, I did do a division and I have 1. So I, if I do add 1, I will have 36, and this will be a multiple of 2. So here, I do, uh, I do that. So this is a property. So all the sequence. I will send on network will be a multiple of g of x. So now the receiver receive a sequence g of x, which may or may not be different of this. It depends if you have transmission error or not. So suppose that you have one transmission error. It means that if you divide g of x by g of, a, uh, g of x, then the rest will be something that is different from 0. So this is not a multiple of g of x. 
So it means that I will say, okay, this there are there is some transmission error in my pack. I don't know where, but I know that there is something wrong because it's not a multiple of my generating polynomial. So that's the property we we want, or we are going to use to detect errors. So we will see some good property of that after. So here is an example. So I did it, um, maybe I, I hope I made no mistake when I did it on the slide. But here is what I want to do. So here's the initial sequence I wanted to send. So it's the sequence we, we had here. <coughs> Okay, and I defined a ge polynomial generate thing, which is x, x2 plus uh, x squared, sorry, <coughs> plus 1. Sorry? It's different. It's different? Really? Yeah. Oh, 17. 17. Ah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> because what I have to do first is to multiply this sequence by x power r, and r is the rank of my polynomial. So it's what I'm doing here. And so in fact, what the division will not be on this initial sequence, but will be on something shifted by 2. So why am I doing that? It's because when I adding plus r, plus r of x, here, what I know is the rank of this uh, remaining part is less is less than the rank of my polynomial. Because if it was higher, I will be able to do one step more and do again the division. So I stop, for example, when I do my division by 2, I stop only when the rest was less than 2. So it's the same thing here. So it means that I have done a shift of here, for example, 3 bits. So two, zero, uh, one, two, zero, one, two. So I do a shift of two bits, sorry, and the rest will be on two bits. So when I add things here, I will not modify the original sequence. I will add a CRC at the end, but I will not add some trouble. I will change a bit of the original sequence. You need a shift to apply the properties later. Sorry, which you property? You, you do the shift here so you can apply the property. Yes, right? but I will. Be, I could have done what I have done here. When I told you that I have 35 divided by 2, I have here uh, 1, and I say I put 36. But here you are. You cannot tell if I was really wanted to send 36 and I add the rest of 0, and I wanted to send 35 and I add the rest of 1. If the receiver cannot distinguish both of them. But if I multiply, for example, by 10, which is a stupid example, but I will have 350, I do the division, and maybe I will have one. Here it's not a good example because it was, but if I add one here, or I do the division here, but I add some place to put the rest, I will put 35 on one here. And if I wanted to send 36, I will send 36 and I will put the rest of 0. Okay? So here is to give room to, to keep the initial sequence. So now we do the division. So you can uh, verify with me that it's correct. Normally it is, but students see all the the mistakes. So here in 17, how many times I have x2? I have 15. So it means that I have x power 17 plus x power 15. So I do that. I multiply x power 2 plus 1 by x power 15. I have this. When I subtract or I add, because it's the same operation, and here I will have this polynomial value. I have 15 that is suppressed here, 
17 that is suppressed here, and I keep that. So now I have a new polynomial that I have to divide it, x power 16 plus etc. And I have to divide it by x power uh, x squared plus 1. So, how many times goes uh, x2 in uh, x15? x14. So I do again the division. And here you see that x16, x16 disappeared. So I'm reducing my rank. But here I have x14. x14 doesn't appear, so I will have x14 plus x13 plus x13. So in x14, how many times goes x squared? 12 times. So I do that. I suppress, etc., etc., until I got x. And x, so is less, the rank of x is less than x squared, or 2. And so it means that I cannot continue the division, and here is the value I can send. So I will add, when I will send information on the network, I will send this. So if we look binary, it means that I have here my initial sequence. And in the red part, I will write the binary value of x. So x is x plus uh, 0 times x power 0. So it's 1, 0. So now, it's quite easy to do what will do the receiver. The receiver here will do the division. And of course, we add plus x everywhere and plus x everywhere. Maybe that at the end it's 0. Mm -hmm. So this part is a multiple. This value here is a multiple of a x squared plus 1. So that's a good property. So why we are doing all this? Uh, maybe we can have a look after that on, uh, on uh, how we implement that, and then we will discuss about the properties. So what do we have here? We, we have this uh, polynomial value, but of course if you say I have to put my, my MATLAB in my computer to do the polynomial division when I'm sending a packet <coughs> is not a good thing. So we have to make it not in theory by polynomial division, but we have to do it in practice. And what do we have in practice when we play with a computer? We have shift, we have uh, XOR, etc. etc. So what is interesting to not notice come back here, is that here I present you this as a plus one or plus in modulo two arithmetics. But if I am an electronation, I will say that this is XOR. Executive OR, executive OR, it means that zero plus zero equals zero. And when it's when it's the same, it's zero, and when it's different, it's one. So here it's something, a very, very simple operation you have on every hardware. So that's something we can implement. And so what will be the algorithm? That here I have my sequence I want to set. So I forget about polynomials, but I will try to reproduce what I did when I did this polynomial division. So here, first thing I do is a shift. I multiply by x power 2, in my example. So I made a shift of 2 bits. So I add these 2 bits, and these 2 bits will be, as we say, the room for the CRC. For the information, the redundancy information we will add to detect if we have error or not. So now, what we do, the algorithm will be the, the following. We align our generating polynomial on the rightmost bit, uh, the leftmost bit equal to 1. So 
So in my sequence here, the first bit was equal to zero, so I put it here. Then I send bits on the left of my generating polynomial. So here I can send on the wire by bits equal to zero. Then I do VXOR. So I have this result. And I go back to the first step. So I do an XOR. So I have to align, sorry, I have to align my generating polynomial on the first bit equal to one, or the left bit equal to one. And so here I align, I send bits here that are on the left. So I already sent zero, so now I send one. So I send it on the original sequence, sequence, not on the division I am doing, because on the division I am doing, I am flipping bits. And of course, it's not what I want to send. What I want to send is here, this, white, uh, this black part. So now I do again, I'll align my generating polynomial on the left uh, on part of the sequence I want to send. I do a division and I'm sending the bits on the left, etc., etc., until, of course, I cannot do any more shift because I have sent almost all the bits. So what do I do now? I continue to send the, par the following part of the, my sequence and then I send the rest of my division. So it's the same thing. It's exactly the same thing we have done when we were doing polynomial division. But here, it's not math, it's just XOR and shift. So what is interesting to, to see here is that I can compute the CLC as I am sending information. I don't need all the information to compute the CRC. When I'm sending a bit, I can do the XOR. And at the end, I will have the result. And then I can send the result. And the same thing, when I'm receiving a sequence from the network, I can start computing the CRC or verify the CRC while I'm receiving the information. And at the end, I know if it's correct or not. If I have zero here when I'm receiving the information, I know it's correct. If I don't have zero, I know it's, not, it's wrong. So I don't add extra time when computing CRC. It can be done when you send information. So that's why, for example, when I talk about PDU this morning, when you look at the structure at layer 2, so when we talk about data link PDU, what will be the format of this kind of thing? It will be an either. So you send first. Then you send the data. And at the end, you will add a CRC. <laughs> Why at the end? Because you compute it as you send the information. And what is interesting to notice is that the CSC will cover the data on the other part. So what is the good property of the CRC? Is that, for example, in uh, Ethernet, we have a uh, CSC that the highest power of the rank is 32. So it means that the size of the CSC will be 32 bits. And the CRC will be able to, uh, to detect all the errors, 100% of errors, if you change the sequence under and all the errors are located on 32 bits. So if you have this, so all your errors error are located at one precise part of, the net, uh, of your data, of your frame, 
here, and the size of ERR is less than the size of CRC, then you will detect everything. If it's not the case, then you have, of course, if you have some very clever errors that change you to another multiple of your CRC, then of course you uh, will not detect it. But the error has to be clever. And normally, error are stupid. It's because you switch on a light or things like this. So you have errors that are located in some area of your, net, of your uh, frame. And so it can be easily detected. So that's uh, the magic of CRC. So what is important to, to see is that when, what do I do when I receive a frame with a wrong CRC? What will I do? Do I send a message to the sender that tells you, OK, you send me something that goes wrong? Why? It's because you don't know where is the error. The error can be in the data part. The error can be in the CRC part. So everything you receive is correct, but the error is in CRC, but it's a problem. And the error can be also in the header. So here, for example, I can change the address of the sender. <laughs> so here, I send a message, and the answer, you have a problem, will be sent to another equipment. So normally, or oh, what you do uh, in most of the case, it's when you receive a frame with a wrong CRC, you discard the frame. So you don't believe to anything, it's like you have never received it. So it's like when we and in a postal network, the fact that the postcard was lost. But in fact, physically, you receive the postcard. But there was something wrong on it, so you discard it. But you receive something. But you forget it because it's wrong. So that's why usually we say that we have lost a frame, but in fact, we never lost a frame. The frame arrived to the destination, but the CRC was wrong on the frame was rejected. Okay? So, so yeah. if, if everything is vulnerable to errors, how to prevent? So, if you have, so the main hypothesis here is that you don't have too much error. If you have too many errors, then you have a problem. So you have two solutions. One solution is, for example, to reduce the size of your PDU. So for example, in Radio Link, on 3G or in GSM, it's what you do. You have a very small frame, because this way the probability of error is less than if you are sending long frames. So this is one possibility. Another possibility, as I say, for example, in ADSL, is to use fake forward error codes to correct errors. And CRC will work only if error occurs from time to time, but not on each frame. Otherwise, what the protocol we are going to see doesn't work. So if you have a lot of error on your link, first add a fake to allow to, the, uh, to correct errors. And as I say in uh, ADSL, first you shuffle the bits. So you take, for example, three frames, and you send it that way. So if you have an error that occurs here, you will not uh, have all the error on the same frame, but you will uh, put it on different. So you have different tricks to do that. And what we are going to see right now, it's, we suppose that we don't have too much error on the list. An error has a very doesn't occur on each frame. Because if it occurs on 
His friend, we cannot react to. Nothing will be. So, uh, maybe we can have a break right now. And after the break, we will see uh, a protocol that works. <laughs>